Hello everybody, Hyper Mario Sunshine here, and welcome to our brand new Let's Play. Let's Play number 32, as I revealed it, you know, probably like a week ago, Ace Attorney. So yes, I am playing this on the Nintendo Switch version. Uh, I did hint out that we were going to be playing a DS game, and yes, this game originally was a Game Boy Advance game, but then as it released in the West, it got ported onto the DS, and honestly for the better, because touchscreen is just way easier. Uh, so yeah, uh, I wanted to also introduce a brand new series onto the channel, and uh, it's a very dialogue-heavy thing, so it's going to be a bit different from, not even a bit different, very different from our usual Let's Play standards, so uh, be aware that, yeah, this is going to be very dialogue-heavy. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Ace Attorney games are a, well, kind of like a visual novel and also a, like, puzzle mis mystery kind of game. Uh, and it just, like, it just has a really enticing story overall, the entire series, and a lot of lovable, goofy characters. And, uh, the series could get a bit dark, too. It is, uh, rated T for Tina, as we all know. And, uh, yeah, I'm still a little bit sick, so please do be wary of that as well. But yeah, I know I've also played, like, kind of dialogue-heavy stuff before, you know, RPGs, but, uh, honestly, this is just mostly dialogue, you know, we still have at least, like, gameplay to go over, but yeah, this is entirely mostly dialogue, but trust me, this is a really fun time, and, uh, yeah, I think Ace Attorney is one of the go-to series for, you know, point-and-click adventures like this, so, by, without further ado, let's start a new game, and we shall start with Episode 1. The first turnabout of Ace Attorney. <gasps> Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! Gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right! Uh-oh! Hiya, Chief! Whew! I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick. You gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. 
The guy that they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He's been, he has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he is a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one. Which is why I took on the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! August 3rd, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? I yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Hands shaking. I say, fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and coincisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. That'll be Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about, and you'll you about you, and you'll do j fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's wait. Uh oh. No. No way! I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim! Of course, I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is in what listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me. Please, I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? So yes, pressing the R button for the court record, we get our attorney's badge. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Carry this. Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death, July 31st, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blood trauma. And if we press the R button again... We get the profiles of everybody involved in the story, or in the case in this point. We have Mia Fay, age 27, chief attorney at Fay & Co., my boss and a very good defense attorney. I love Mia. She is absolutely amazing, and I'm, I'm going to say this out of the way right now. She is hot. <laughs> I love her. Uh, Larry Butts, age 23, the defendant in this case, a likable guy who's been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case, a model she lived in an apartment by herself. And lastly, Winston Payne, age 52, the prosecution for this case. Lacks presence. Generally bad at getting his point across. So yeah, that's how you access the evidence and the profiles with the court record. So we know it is Cindy Stone. <laughs> Cinder Block. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me. What was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well, then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court what just what that object was? The weapon, the murder weapon, was this statue of the thinker. I was 
found, it was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into the evidence. Statue added to the court record. Statue, a statue of the thinker, the, the, the in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. The, that evidence is the only ammunition you have in the court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Yes, I would highly recommend what Mia is saying here. Do check it every now and then. Uh, definitely repeatedly as she says because, yeah, it's going to definitely be on your mind what you need to do. It's always, you always have to be on top of everything, so just be aware. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that may, might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact... She had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them, the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport has been added to the courtroom record passport, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on July 30th, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? So, yeah, the Ace Attorney series has a lot of these choices. Uh, some of them may lead to different dialogue, some of them may lead to some funny moments, others may cause consequences, which we'll get to later. But this is one of the instances where it could actually lead to something funny, so we'll actually wait and see what happens. Might be better to not get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, no way! That cheating she-dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this doesn't. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Mm -hmm. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Alright, we'll stop him this time. I'll send him a signal. Why? Like a dog! Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. This is the third bad feeling you had today, Phoenix. We have a witness that can prove he did go into the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. 
just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Mr. Sot, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that this correct? Oh, oh, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sot, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. All right, here we go, the basically main part of the game. The witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw the, a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember that time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you in against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sot used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the courtroom record, or court record rather. Blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 o'clock p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination? Your Honor? All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Um... What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies, the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the, fa the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button and point out the contradictions in the toast testimony. So here we go cross-examination portion. So yeah, you could go through the conversation by pressing the A button. You could skip most of the dialogue. You could go left and right to go back and forth between them. Uh, pressing L, let's go to the first one for example. We could do our press here. And uh, Phoenix says, I'll hold it! As you guys can see, isn't a man leaving an apartment in a common site? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Er, heh. I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the, the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing from the crime scene. A scene of a crime. The defense requests that the re witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that he saw s what the man he saw look suspicious. So, what happened next? So yes, we're not going to go through every single press, there is some funny dialogue, so whatever looks interesting or potentially funny to me, I am going to press and hopefully go over it. whatever seems just interesting in general. Uh, pressing may actually lead to, feature, to future uh, things within each case, 
So, yeah, that e pressing is very important and vital, but it also could lead to something funny. Uh, or something just witty, just interesting dialogue overall. Uh, presenting, uh, as you can see at the top right, whenever we present, we will have the chance of presenting either evidence or a profile. Uh, but I believe profiles aren't available as of yet, so we can only present the evidence available. Uh, if you get something wrong or present something at the wrong time, the music will continue and show that you got it wrong, and at the top right you will lose your health. Or, well, health in this case is more so the fact of how many tries you have uh, with the judge. So, yeah, finding the right thing, as we'll find here. Uh, let's actually press this real quick. So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no! Nothing! Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Okay, so the time exactly was 1 o'clock p.m. One o'clock p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. One o'clock p.m.? Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. See, this is the perfect spot. So, yes, kind of just use a little bit of logic here. And the perfect thing to present here is the blackout record itself. Actually, wait. The autopsy reporter, my bad. And the music stops, meaning that you are correct. You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 o'clock p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that! Oh, er... This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sart? Why were you so certain that uh, you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I, er... Well, I... Gee, that's real a really good question. Great job, Wright. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait! I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Alright, so... Yeah, we got our second one, The Time of Discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video program, a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 o'clock p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. As you can see, something's very clear there. Hmm, I see, you heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Yep, even Phoenix is very confident. The time of discovery, let's begin. She do want to see this one. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio at the, on the premises. There was only one large television. Right, I can't put, put my finger on it, but some, something about the smell seems fishy. Something about hearing the television? The witness has testified he heard this time. And I think we know what it is because the blackout record. Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it! 
and the turnabout music is so good. Just take a quick listen. Yeah, the series is just full of so many good songs. Ugh. I'm just really excited to be playing through this, man. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! Hey, well, uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sart? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sart, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. The constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. But my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sant. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. As you can hear, the song is actually sped up now. Whenever the song speeds up, you're actually in the final phase of this portion of the case. So, yeah. Uh, we will be seeing that more thoroughly as we progress into more episodes, but yeah. As for case one, this is it. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Alright. Our cross-examination begins, and I guess another running thing will be me drinking water, because trust me, the the tons of dialogue is definitely going to be affecting my the way how I am, my throat and my mouth. It's just going to be coming dry. And yet you could hear it too, even the uh, the music here is also sped up. So take a So yes, uh, just pay attention to the music. Uh, as I also mentioned before, if you press something you get it wrong, the music will continue. So whenever you press and you get right, it will basically be quiet and there will be no music playing until the turnabout song plays and the turnabout song is also really good so there's a clock in the apartment wasn't there yeah the murder weapon the killer used it to hit the victim the murder weapon yes the table clock that was used as a weapon that's what i just said did you doze off in the middle of the, my testimony or something Something's fishy here. Yep, and we shall present the statue. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Y you, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw it. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submit it as, my, as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears the w that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? I'm afraid we do. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... 
went into the apartment. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove it I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove that you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice! That was the second you- the, that was the sound you heard! Order in the court! Intriguing! Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it? The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day, I, I never... Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, uh, yeah! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you, it was him, I tell you, I saw him, he, he killed her, and he should burn, burn, give him death. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please, there is isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honor? The sound Mr. Saw it heard was definitely this clock. As you can see at the top right now, yeah, it's flashing red, so if we get this incorrect, we will lose a bit of uh, health in this case. Or in this case, our reputation with the uh, judge. So we have three choices here. Selecting the incorrect one will make us lose two of our meter. So we're going to do try sounding the clock. And also before we click on anything, I just love this theme. This is the most iconic theme in all of Ace Attorney. So I'd rather just get out of the way right now. Just take a quick listen. There we go. Yeah, so that is Pursuit Cornered. So yeah, uh, Pursuit Cornered is one of the best tracks in all of Ace Her Turning, and it's the most iconic one too. So we shall finally click Try Sounding the Clock. Let's sound the clock now. Here in this court, Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It, it's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. S what Mr. Saw it heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saw it... Try to talk your way out of this one! Ha! Ha ha! You forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right! How am I supposed going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the, the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Saw it. I come all the way here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Grr. 
I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Saw it. Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the date of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think it. Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I think we do. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and then let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you can you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. And that would be the only thing we haven't shown was the passport. The victim had just returned home from aboard the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's four o'clock here, it's one in the morning, a.m. in the morning, the, in the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the, her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sot, or should I say, Mr. Did It? Eh. Ugh, gross, he's foaming from the mouth. Oh, order! Order, I say! Well, this case was has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, er, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And the confetti reigns as we celebrate. And with that, this court is adjourned. Oh, you guys, you guys just probably heard my water bottle, but... It turns out that, Mr. that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sot let himself in to do his jury work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sot grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ooh, I still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! Th thanks Chief! I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chiefs looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! You're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No! I mean, bad. 
Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man! Gone forever! Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry! H Harry? Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent! Heh, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever! Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My tree. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey! Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. But really? You... You made this? Well, thank you. I'll be... I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't you... Doesn't... Don't... Eh, don't that make you want to cr cr just cry? <laughs> Larry... Are you so sure? Exqueeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing. Really? Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, right! What the heck is she talking about? I think that is the statue itself. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are real guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Er, yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you... Count the clock he gave to Mia. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I would, wouldn't be able to keep. The end. And we shall save our progress. And we shall overwrite this, because this was a practice thing. Uh, I actually did record the first episode, but my audio was just really, really bad. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this take was better. But yeah, we're going to be saving here. And next time on Ace Attorney, we will begin Episode 2, Turnabout Sisters. See you guys then.
Thank you all for watching.